Hello, this is Jeffrey Fox again. We're in the third uh, unit of the cloud computing, which is the fourth unit of the um, parallel and cloud computing section. And um, this is all part of the Big Data Applications Analytics course. And this is the uh, third lesson of uh, this uh, unit. And it consists of an analysis of major cloud providers. And we base that on a pretty thorough um, white paper from the Gartner Corporation, of course, published a lot of analyses of all sorts of technology. So here is the, one of their key pictures. Uh, here up here is the link to their work. And this is what they call their magic quadrant. And um, we have quality of the implementation, called ability to execute going up that way, and completeness of system or vision going along that way. And we have niche players sort of in this uh, area here, and visionaries here uh, in this uh, quadrant here, leaders up here. And challenges up here, but there aren't any challenges as far as I know. Um, so the leaders are clearly viewed by Gartner as two: Microsoft Azure and Amazon Web Services, uh, who would dominate the uh, the offerings. They have a large fraction more than I mean a big factor more than everybody else put together. Uh, we have some well-known names down here: Google. Uh, Verizon, CSC, Rackspace, IBM is uh, increasing their, their effort in this area. VMware, the uh, software provider down here. HP and GoGrid are actually pretty well known. So these, um, so this is telling you, for example, that um, Amazon dominates. Google has only just come online, and so its ability to execute is viewed as lower. But they have such good technology that they're put up here in the visionary section. So let's now go into some more detail. And we only go into detail for four, Amazon, Microsoft, Google, and Rackspace. Um, Here's just another link for what people expected to happen during the year. I read that analysis, it didn't seem terribly deep. And so let's get down to Amazon. So it has um, groups of data centers, which are called regions. And those regions are at east and west coast of the US, Ireland, Japan, Singapore, Australia, Brazil, and uh, just about to come online, China. And it has a special region dedicated to the US federal government. So Amazon, I'm sorry, Elastic Compute Cloud EC2 is a standard system. It has um, multi-tenant, many, many users. Um, you fix, you, have, you cannot change the size of um, your VMs after you get them, but of course you have many different sizes you can choose from. It uses Zen as the hypervisor. And you can also get dedicated VMs, namely the whole Machine is uh, devoted to you by dedicated instances. And it has special uh, high performance computing options, including GPUs and better quality networking. Um, it clearly uh, didn't has negotiated deals such as that with the US intelligence community. And it has also a, a virtual private network which it uh, offers. So it's. Um, it's a public cloud, but a very powerful and customizable public cloud. So it has a, a rich set of storage op op options, including um, VM store. I mean, storage on the VMs. Uh, that's uh, just for during the time the job is running. It has block storage, elastic block store. It has solid state disks on the VMs if you want them. And it has storage performance guarantees. Uh, it has the uh, object-based storage, S3, uh, with a, a 
Content Delivery Network called CloudFront, and there's Glacier here for long-term archival storage. That's of course cheaper than the other storage. Um, it has lots of networking, and it has, uh, as I already mentioned, the virtual private cloud. And it has uh, something called uh, AWS Direct Connect, which allows you to uh, connect from Amazon to other places. It has a powerful security model using roles, uh, which is done for each element of the cloud. And the customer can define the roles and has control over permissions. And of course, it um, has got lots of um, um, certifications as to its capabilities. And it ha I mean, here's a really interesting documentation of its dominance. It has more than five times the compute capacity of all the other 14 providers in this quadrant. So it's by definition, at least five times bigger than any other ones, such as Microsoft Azure. So we need to bear that in mind as we look at the other ones. It is. Uh, it has been very um, vigorous. I, I was always amazed how it came up with new, what I would call platform as a service options, like Kinesis, which is the uh, streaming solution. Lots of new database solutions. And although it started off as pure infrastructure as a service with the compute and storage, it now has as many platform as a service offerings as, say, Azure, which started off as platform as a service. And I say it is very, you know, I mean, it is really changing rapidly. You just compare the options you can have now with what you could have a year ago, there's impressive changes. It has obviously many partners, such as, I know, MATLAB. And uh, who, who have licensed their software. And uh, there is a marketplace where you can buy uh, software in, as images, which allow, makes it easier to deploy. Um, in general, actually, you know, we know software licenses are a real pain, and so to have that all done for you is pretty important. Uh, the its interface, which is typically either the S3 or a, Easy to interface is not an industry standard. However, it's a de facto standard. And uh, many systems such as OpenStack support directly the Amazon standard. And um, though there are different industry standards, it's not totally clear that uh, Amazon won't win. And actually, just because it's such a dominant player that its interface will be by def almost by definition the standard. It's, uh, it's price competitive, like when Google did some recent price reductions, Amazon uh, quietly matched it. And uh, we have this estimates here of how much uh, money it's making. It made uh, its revenue for infrastructure as a service is meant to be 4.7 billion. Uh, in 2014, only 156 million for Microsoft and 66 million for Google. Actually, it's a little surprising given Google came online so late that Microsoft uh, is not a bigger. I would have expected Microsoft to be bigger, both compared to Amazon and to compared to Google. Um, so here's actually um, the October 16th uh, price, October 6th pricing from Google. They actually had further price cuts um, in November, but those were not to the, these uh, basic infrastructure as a service. And of course, Google claims, possibly correctly, that their prices are 10 to 20% cheaper than Amazon. And of course, these are these different. Um, um, Types of instances, standard instances, high memory instances, high CPU instances. And these are the uh, number of cores, which uh, eight cores is probably typically a full machine. Although they obviously have modern machines with 16 cores in total on the node. And uh, <coughs> these are the prices, and obviously the larger CPU offerings, which are. Um, uh, are the way Google seems to have the most um, price differential around minus 24%. So this is obviously uh, not, you shouldn't 
I mean, I guess, you know, I mean, if you really just had a job to run and all you cared about was the price, this is worth looking at. But uh, for most people, this uh, price differential will not cause them to give up Amazon. Now let's come to Google. Google for a long time just had one offering called the Google App Engine, which we actually call a framework. It's not, it's not a, it allows you to build a certain type of application, typically a business application, and a small, I think it's mainly aimed at small businesses. And um, it was all built on very good Google technologies, but it was pretty special, like, for instance, you really couldn't use it for science because it didn't support parallel computing. And so in um, December 2013, only a year ago, they launched uh, the Google uh, Compute Engine, as opposed to the Google App Engine. And the Compute Engine is the infrastructure as a service offering. It also has regions, each of which has at least two uh, zones or data centers. The Central US, European, and Asia. And it uses a KVM, not, uh, not Zen. And it's again multi-user and fixed size. Although you can, of course, as we saw on the previous slide, choose many different sizes. And it's meant to, I gather, get you what you want very quickly, less than a minute. And always, of course, you can, these are all supporting uh, scaling. That's the so-called elastic property of clouds. That uh, when you want, when you need more, you can just buy more. And um, it has similar storage to Amazon. And I guess uh, this I expect also is quite common. The storage is encrypted, the block storage. So here, the role based the permissions apply to the whole account. Remember, Amazon was per element, and. Um, its networking is not as rich as Amazon at the moment. Um, so Google likes to say you can run like Google. It's like having Intel inside you have Google, Google uh, in your so inside your software, and of course Google does have some of the very best technologies in the world because they run such a mature, uh, powerful software environment. They have they tend to build software, for instance. Way ahead of where the when it appears on the Apache Big Data stack. Chubby is of course um, was first from Google. It now is Zookeeper in um, in um, Apache. MapReduce was um, became a dupe in Apache. So it's rather difficult to evaluate Google, which is why it's placed in not so easy to, for it to implement, but highly visionary. Because it's got a lot of power in this sun, but it is not, uh, it has only been around for a year. So, but it has all the technologies and possibly more. I mean, it has more people on staff, for instance, than Amazon, who really know how to build the relevant software. So, in principle, Google can put more resources on it than Amazon can. Um, so I say it has huge experience, and uh, it offers. Uh, actually, I would say all of them have a fluid boundary between infrastructure as a service and platform as a service, because you have an infrastructure as a service, and you have just lots of services, and those services tend to be independent. So there's not Google App Engine was rather specialized. It was a framework or an environment where you only do a certain few things. <coughs> platform as a service is just the ability to take infrastructure as a service and add a whole bunch of different uh, middleware services. Um, of course, Google probably has the world's biggest, I mean, I suspect Google owns more computers than anybody else in the world. And so they have a lot of hidden power. They have a giant lurking in the background. If I was Amazon, I'd be a bit worried. Um, I mean, Amazon. Microsoft and Google have both have great capabilities, and possibly it's in the opposite order. That Google has the greatest, then Microsoft, and then Amazon. But the actual 
current uh, ranking is exactly the opposite. That Amazon is ahead, followed by Microsoft, followed by Google. But that's sort of timing. So now we come to Microsoft Azure, which as we noted, was originally uh, just platform as a service. And at the time it was platform as a service, it was always said that Amazon was infrastructure as a service. But Amazon has actually always matched what the other vendors have. And Amazon was offering very similar platform capabilities to Microsoft right from the beginning. Um, a key um, came, so then April of last year, they changed this and added infrastructure as a service. And they also offered important things like, <coughs> like Linux uh, operating systems. And again, you have multiple data centers, Ireland, Netherlands, Hong Kong, Japan, Singapore, China, and uh, soon to come along Brazil. And then similar to um, Google and uh, Amazon, the, um, they have a different virtualization framework, Hyper-V, and whereas remember the others was Zen or KVM. They also have block storage, which is persistent. And uh, they have that uh, object-based cloud storage integrated with content delivery networks. Um, so they have uh, partner exchange, Azure Express route to allow you to link to other places. So they, Gartner seems to think there's some um, limitations on security in Azure. That's not something I know a lot um, about. Uh, they do role-based access control again, but then again, the permissions are across the account. Now, an interesting feature of Azure, which is both its strength and weakness, is its integration with Windows. Because obviously, Microsoft's greatest capabilities are Windows, and if you're using Windows, on your local cluster, Azure is the obvious one to use. Um, but if you're a Linux user, which actually most users are, the Apache stack is built on Linux, not directly on Windows or, or a .NET. Um, so it's not so clear. And in fact, we can see this in the Microsoft's deployment of a dupe on Azure. They spent an incredible length of time doing that, and I believe it's because they moved a dupe to .NET, which in my opinion is a mistake. There is no way they can port the full Apache software to .NET. And they will always just do a few packages and always be behind. Because they, you, when you're always porting, you can never be as up to date as the people who don't, have, don't have, have to port. So I think the people who are using Docker, KVM, Zen, and Linux have a significant advantage. And I think Microsoft should Continue to offer Windows for the people who want it, but they really have to worry that their tie to Windows is not dragging them, dragging them down, and which I think it did with the dupe. So now we come to the last slide and the last uh, compute or infrastructure as a service provider. That's Rackspace. I chose Rackspace because it may not be the largest of the other vendors other than the big three. But it's uh, rather well known because of its involvement in OpenStack. And it, uh, it, it, it's one of the uh, cloud providers that actually started off as a web, post, uh, web hosting system. So it's one of the systems that uh, was actually dominated before Amazon came along with infrastructure as a service by offering uh, web hosting, uh, hosting for websites. Uh, I remember in um, 2010, we had a uh, conference in, uh, on clouds in Indianapolis. And a fellow from Rackspace came along and gave an excellent tutorial on OpenStack and explaining how the storage part of OpenStack was effectively uh, the Rackspace commercial solution for storage, cloud storage, but they uh, open sourced it. This is an interesting strategy that um, is being taken up by, by several companies in different ways that you, when you're in a very competitive world, it's sometimes not possible to keep uh, your your resource of proprietary, but rather you have to uh, bring it into open source, uh, 
try to swamp the world with the brilliance of your software, get other people working on it, and get very positive, uh, positive uh, media. Um, so as I point out, they have a private cloud business built around uh, professional services and of course their web hosting. And um, they can also support OpenStack in customer data centers. <coughs> They have related businesses, which I'm not familiar with. SAS email and jungle disk. And they have data centers in two in the U two U in the two US regions, Central and Eastern, United Kingdom, Australia, and Hong Kong. They use Zen, which is supported by Citrix. Citrix is one of these uh, companies that makes its money <coughs> supporting open 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 source software. <coughs> That's like Red Hat does for Linux. And it, of course, uses OpenStack uh, as its infrastructure as a service offering. It has the usual uh, storage options, because uh, OpenStack's uh, Swift is, that's, is OpenStack storage, and that's a classic object store like S3. On your nodes, you can have SSDs if you like. So that's the end of this section. It's uh, reasonably interesting to compare them and the and the sort of difference. I consider the difference between the leading vendors, which are still way really different in their sales volume, but uh, the sales volume doesn't clearly um, uh, match the capability. So I expect maybe that might change over the next uh, three years. So that's uh, Jeffrey Fox signing off. Thank you very much.